good afternoon everyone <laughs> it's a brilliant day well i am much good afternoon everybody how was your sunday how was your sunday what did you do on this wonderful day uh the weather is warming up and um I have a couple of things that I want to share with you. Let's see if we have some people coming on. Good afternoon. Let's see. A very good afternoon to everybody. I want to share a couple of things today. Uh, first of all, I just want um, to talk about, to send my congratulatory messages to the President uh, of the Republic of Zambia for touring Western Province. It's an absolute good thing that he's doing. And it shows his level of desire to engage with the nation, the grassroots. And so for me, I say congratulations to him. <clears throat> um, I think when we speak against certain things that happen in our country, it doesn't mean individuals. It just means we dislike what these individuals may be doing or may have done. So it is just an amazing thing, I think, to see the president engage uh, the nation in such a level. Western province is one of the most underdeveloped places in Zambia. And I would like you to actually know that Western province is the least developed province in Zambia. Even if you look at Mongo district, for example, uh, which is the center, the provincial capital of Western province, and you look at other towns, whether it's in northern province, even in southern province. If you take a, a town like Monze, where the president was booed last week, um, and you compare Monze to Mongo, you find that Monze is much bigger than Mongo in many, many aspects. You know, in, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, so many things, uh, commerce. So to see the president engage the people of Western province, one thing I guarantee is he will not be booed in Western province for many, many reasons. So I want to say congratulations to him. Having said that, I just want to say to all of us in Zambia that freedom of expression, the freedom of expression we are fighting for is not just freedom of expression to, to support what you believe in. Even when we speak uh, against you, it's also freedom of, of expression, all right? And in particular, <clears throat> I want to stand with my sister, Lily Mutams, who was insulted, threatened, and called all kinds of names by members of the UPND just because Lily Mutams said nice things about the president of Zambia. <laughs> the president of Zambia is not our enemy, guys. It's the systems in Zambia that are our enemies. It's the structures of Zambia that are our enemies. For those of you that called Lily all kinds of names in the name of your particular political party, you are actually frightening us because, uh, and this is what I said in the live yesterday, that when you look at the history of violence in Zambia, uh, when you look at the history of Zambia, politically, every subsequent political party has become more violent than the pre previous one. And if, if UPND cadres and political party members of UPND can call, uh, uh, can call Lily a prostitute, for, for simply appreciating something that the president did. That is uncalled for. You need to apologize to Lily. 
pressure says uh, it's his duty to visit uh, to thank him. Why shouldn't I thank him? That's not my philosophy. For me, even if my child buys me a present, I still thank my child. If my wife buys me my wife, if my father uh, pays my school fees, I still thank Manners. It's not called politics. It's manners, precious. So when I thank the president uh, for doing the right thing, it means I appreciate what the president has done. Even if it is his duty, it means I'm grateful. Gratitude is not about duty and whatnot. No, gratitude is just that. It's gratitude. And so I thank him for doing that. That is leadership. We cannot just criticize people when they are doing the wrong thing. We must also thank people when they are doing the right thing. Then that means we ourselves are responsible critics of, of others. So I just wanted to thank him today. Really, really thank him. It means a lot to me, you know, to see the president engaging with the country. Last week he was in Monze, he's in Western province. Whether he's campaigning or not campaigning, that is his business. That is his business, him and his political party. But at the end of the day, we must say good things. When people do good things, you must speak. Because if you only speak when people do bad things, then you are not okay upstairs. Okay? Uh, so that is what I wanted to say today. Now, uh, Mapanjila, how are you? Thank you for your kind words. Manawa says my favorite being and his lovely voice. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you as well. So we cannot just be people who criticize others when they do wrong. We must be people who thank others when they do right. And for me, I would like to state here and be on record that the people in the UPND, the people in the UPND must not be violent towards us who speak. And if you are going to threaten Lily, you are not only threatening Lily, you are threatening all of us who speak. And you are scaring us. And you are scaring us. And you are scaring. Because then we are going to say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe as bad as the PF may have been in other areas, uh, Maybe they allow us to speak. <laughs> Maybe they may threaten to break our bones, but they don't actually break our bones. Maybe these other guys will come and break our bones. And so you, can, you cannot win political favors by threatening people. You cannot do that. You cannot win favors by threatening people. And Lily has raised a very difficult point. You know, Lily is a very successful woman, very accomplished woman, hardworking woman, and to call women prostitutes just because they have spoken out their mind, that is wrong. It is wrong whether it's done by UPND or whether it's done by PF. It is wrong. It is very, very, very wrong. And I would like to warn all UPND members. I would like to warn all UPND members. Do not even take it for granted that you are winning 2021. Do not. Do not even take it for granted that you are winning 2021. Do not. You go out there and work hard. You go out there and win votes. You go out there and convince people. Share with people your economic plan for recovering the economy of Zambia. Show people how you are going to lower taxes in Zambia. Show people how you are going to get people outside the unemployment lines and put them in employment lines. Don't go insulting people and threatening people because suddenly... A, a person that you liked has said something, not even a, Lily never said anything against Haka in the HLM. Lily simply appreciated something that the president did. 
And if you know those of us who are speaking out, it's very stressful out here to be speaking, always speaking, always criticizing someone. And eventually you start saying, Nishi uyu muntu, you know, alichape buino olobanje. Auntie Mavis, good afternoon. Auntie Mavis Blair, good afternoon. Uh, and welcome to our Zambian conversation here. You see? So the day you see this person do something positive, you say to yourself, Awe, then he's listening to what we are saying. And you say an appreciation. But you start insulting people. Eh? You start insulting people and calling them all kinds of names just because that day they have criticized you. That is wrong. That is wrong. Just like today, for me praising the president today, some of you will criticize me. To hell. I don't even care. I don't even care if you criticize me because I've appreciated the president. The president of the Republic of Zambia is not my enemy. Enemy. And I will always give him respect as the head of state. And where he does something right, I will say, this the president has done well. And what the president has done today and yesterday to be in Shangombo, these are places where presidents have never even been, you know. Even some You see, like Barack Obama going to Kenya, by the way, when Barack Obama visited Kenya as head of state of America, he was the first president of America to ever visit Kenya. So if somebody stands up and says, thank you, Obama, for visiting Kenya, does it mean it was Obama's duty to visit Kenya? Obama had a choice to visit any of the 189 countries in the world. He went to Kenya for obvious reasons. I would like to warn all the UPND people, including the president of the UPND, do not take, do not take it for granted that you have won 2021, Muntuandi. Do not. Do not. And do not become violent yourselves. And waiting for freedoms here. And you start taking away people who enter power. And who even told you that you are going to enter power in 2021? That is, there is something wrong about thinking you have won when you haven't even won. You see? And let me just tell you something. The patriotic front is not a foolish party. The patriotic front has done a lot of foolish things. But they are not foolish. They are not stupid. They, uh, they think they did not ascend to power doing piki piki na piki doli na kasanga na piki doli. They worked hard. And believe me, they are working even harder even now to, uh, to make sure that they still remain in power in 2021. So, and from power, you better come with answers and solutions. You better come with hope for Zambians. And this whole thing of Bali will fix it, Bali will pay. Me, I don't buy any of that. Me, I don't buy any of that. You cannot come today and say Bali will pay. How will buy Bali pay? Do you even know how public financing is done? Do you know how debt is acquired? Do you know how mismanagement and misappropriation is done? Hmm? Do you know how, how governance is done? You just type. Bali will pay. Do you even know balance of payments? Do you even know how bonds are issued? Do you even know how much of the of the national budget goes towards expenditure? And you write Bali will pay. Ah, don't come to me with Bali will pay. Bali will fix it. Come to me with real life solutions. How you are going to get the six million youths in Zambia between fifteen and thirty five years into employment? Tell me how you are going to pay user lecturers. How are you going to source the money? Where are you going to get the money? Tell me how you are going to boost tourism in Zambia. Tell me how you are going to make sure that doctors don't go and work in South Africa when they can get jobs here in Zambia. Tell me how you are going to ensure security. Tell me how you are going to make sure that FIC report, because today it's PF people in the FIC report. Tomorrow it will be UPND people in the FIC report. Today it's a, what's that Auditor General's report? It is the members of this party in the Auditor General. What is wrong in Zambia is not necessarily a political party. What is wrong and broken in Zambia is a system. And this is the system Kaunda created. This is the system the MMD enriched for themselves. This is the system the PF has also inherited and they've left it alone. 
I'll give you an example. Public Order Act was there during Kaunda's time. Public Order Act came from the British colonial masters. Kaunda left it. MMD didn't like Public Order Act. When MMD came into power, they never changed the Public Order Act because now it was benefiting them and they were using it to kill their enemies, literally, for the MMD. PF didn't like the Public Order Act. PF came into power, they didn't change it. Now they were using it to, to frustrate UPND. UPND doesn't like the Public Order Act. It's very, very possible that UPND will also uh, keep the Public Order Act because they will use it to frustrate their enemies. That is what is wrong in Zambia is that every leader who comes in Zambia simply wants to benefit uh, his people doesn't want to benefit Zambians. That is what is wrong in Zambia. And for me, whether you tell me uh, Nevers Mumba will fix it, Hakainde Ichilema will fix it, that I don't like. I want to know how a particular party will make sure that all the graduates of our country go to university. How will you finance that? How will you make sure retirees are not paid from COVID-19 money? How will you make sure that the police are not compromised so that the police force becomes a very uh, uh, <clears throat> independent unit? How will you make sure that government is not a place of wastefulness and corruption? That is what will inspire me to believe that you can take over leadership in this country. So, having said that, <clears throat> I want to appeal to the UPND members in Mufulira. There is a critical, critically ill PF person who was beaten the other day in Mufulira. I want to appeal to UPND members in Mufulira. Do your best. <clears throat> Donate money. Take care of that person. Let him not die. <clears throat> It doesn't matter how, what happened. I'm not here to blame who beat who, who interfered with who. Peace. When you are a peaceful person, okay? When you are a peaceful person, you want peace. You want peace. You don't, you don't start judging and what, what. We all know this violence, how it started, who instigated it, who started it. it we all know. But what we want to see is leadership from all of us to bring peace to this nation. When you do that and you allow critical voices to criticize you as well, the same way that we criticize others and you show maturity, then I can believe you are a true leader. You heard what the acting ambassador to Zambia from America said the other day, that right now in Zambia, when you criticize leaders, they immediately threaten you with life and all of that. And they basically, the American ambassador condemned what is happening in Zambia. Fine. But if you are doing the very thing we are condemning others for doing, you are birds of the same feather and you are definitely flocking together. So, dear Zambians, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, so, uh, Priska says, you people who are talking, come clean to the people and tell them where you stand. Where am I standing? I'm standing in my home right now. Where do you want me to stand? Hmm? You want me to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to do that. Why should I do that? You are a grown person. Hmm? Uh, you should know what you need to do yourself. Uh, Priska says, what about Vespers? What about Lawrence Banda? We have fought for Vespers. We managed to get great victory for Vespers. Uh, um, we asked the PF government to pay for Vespers. And that matter has been concluded in court. Uh, so we asked PF to rectify Lawrence Banda. We condemned the killing of Lawrence Banda doing this and we will do it. I am not saying the UPND blame for beating that person in Muflira. I didn't say that. I didn't say that and I'll never say that. What I'm saying is out of humanity. In fact, the Zambian law is like this. Even if a thief comes in your yard to steal and you shoot him 
and you shoot a thief who comes in your home, the law says you are supposed to take that thief to the hospital yourself. <laughs> and if you shoot him the second time, after you shot him the first time, you may be charged for murder. We are not here to judge which party is better between PF and UPND. No, 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 no. no. That is your personal decision. But if UPND is going to start threatening people for criticizing them, then UPND is not exercising uh, tolerance towards indifferent voices. You see? And that is a thing. And we need to be careful. Let us see what happened in Malawi. We got excited in Malawi because two handsome men came into power. And within one week, those two handsome men disappointed the country of Malawi and the continent of Africa. That's all I'm saying. You see? And no political party, whether PF or UPND, no political party should feel they have arrived in 2021. 2021 is one year away from today, my friend. And the reason I came today online is, number one, to congratulate the president for doing the right thing in Western province. And, he, and he, we, we should probably thank COVID-19 for keeping our president in the country. I don't know who to thank, but whichever the case, I personally am grateful and I'm inspired to see a president time in a long time traveling in his own country from city to city taking care of situations checking even if he just to lie to the people at least he went to lie in their bedroom he didn't send them an sms regardless of the place that place has a way of changing you Nicholas says, sometimes force is the best language a devil understands clearly. Okay? So, Nicholas, if I insult you right now, okay? Imagine, based on what you have written to me, imagine I insulted you right now. Will you understand that better? And what does that say of me who has to engage in force and insults and violence to address you? You see? We are living in a modern society, and part of modernity is law adjudication and management of a nation. We cannot have new governments coming into power that are worse than the previous governments. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. And for me, whether it's PF or UPND or anybody online who is threatening the lives of other individuals and the freedoms of other, of other individuals, that I condemn. Like right now, I would love to hear the president, wherever he is in Shangombo, to condemn the violence that is going on on the Copper Belt. Because the president gets a brief every morning at 6 a.m. on national security issues. So he knows everything that is going on in the country. He gets a brief every day. So he knows the violence going on in the Copper Belt. I expect him, as he's talking to those traditional uh, leaders, to at least come out and say, I condemn the violence in the Copper Belt. And as long as the president does not condemn these things, these things are, you know, silence is consent as well. Okay. Uh, Norman says, Uncle Norman says, people commenting on Facebook are commenting in their personal capacity and it's wrong to condemn a party in the basis of comments from individuals. Uncle Norman, if you, if you can inbox Lily, you know how Lily is, Lily captures things, screenshots, she will send you screenshots of what they said to her. Uh, Uncle Norman says the president should, should thank Chela for, for going to Mongu. I will not comment on that. So for me, guys, I believe that leadership is about righteousness. It's about equity. It's about rule of law. It's about fairness. It's about truth. It's about integrity. 
and we as leaders, regardless of who we are, we must condemn a wrong for a wrong. Somebody said to me last week, says, Mubita, how come you are now condemning the Malawian president and his vice president, but just a week ago you were celebrating? Yes, I was following. It's like you are following a snake, and you think this is a harmless snake, and suddenly that snake is a python, and it wants to wrap you up. Do you still say you are a good snake? No. And what Malawi did is wrong. Even though the president of Malawi has refused to change his cabinet, my friend, nepotism is nepotism. And if we are going to change Zambia, we must all fight for righteousness, whether we are in power or outside power. A wrong is a wrong. Violence is wrong, regardless of who perpetuates violence. Now, if you are defending yourself, if you are defending yourself, you, are, you have a right to defend yourself, my friend. If somebody comes violent to you and attacks you, you have the right to defend yourself and you can actually go to court and win that case. Uh, so Edgar Lungu went to Shangombo to campaign and nothing to do with the love of the people in Shangombo. Uh, we, won, we went there to, he went there to bribe chiefs. Okay, that's Uncle Norman uh, Chipakupaku all the way from Scotland. I, I respect your view and I'm not even going to argue against that because that's your point of view. And you have a right to say that. You have a right to say that. All I'm saying is I'm just glad to see a president who is now moving from town to town within Zambia and not moving from country to country in the world. That for me is inspiring, period. His motives, all of that, I am not involved in that. May the good Lord bless us all. May the good Lord cause us to love one another. To strengthen one another. To not fear one another, but to respect our laws in our land. To respect human life. And I personally condemn the thuggery that happened in Kitwe at that burial site where PF cadres went and beat people at the burial site just because the person who was being buried was UPND. That is wrong. That is, those are the things the PF should distance itself from, but they don't. And instead you get a minister who goes and says, we are many. We will, you know, let me tell you what is happening on the copper belt right now. And what these ministers are saying, and these PF ministers are saying, and these uh, uh, UPND members of parliament are saying, if this thing is not controlled, my friend, <laughs> something wrong will happen. Oh, I'm just telling you the truth. And as a nation, as a people, we must be, we must condemn violence regardless of which party it is. All right, guys, have a lovely day. Have an amazing Sunday. Violence is not the way. Let us all pray and stay strong. Uh, and uh, let's see, whoever responded must respond in their personal capacity and not on behalf of... Uh, all right, I feel the president... Okay, there are a lot of questions. <clears throat> Let me answer a few. I feel the president should talk to Lusaka minister because he is the one who is inciting violence. That is Charles. Thank you, Charles. Um, Alan says, not condemn, but to stop the violence. As the president is the chief of commander, armed of forces, uh, we should not abuse the word condemn after condemn. <laughs> you are very right. And uh, unfortunately, our police department has no power anymore over Thagari. And I've said this over, I'm on record, I've already said it before, our police has no power anymore. They are scared to be fired. <clears throat> this happened in Sesheke. People were fired in Sesheke for doing the right thing. And uh, unfortunately, there is <clears throat> they, there's very little the police can do. Because the bosses of the police are political appointees. So we can only pray and hope for the right thing. <clears throat> Me, I can't control what people in power do. If people who are in power are abusing their power, they will be answerable one day. They will be answerable one day. What I don't want is people who are not yet in power <laughs> to start abusing power they don't even have yet. 
that for me is a very scary thing and this is where people say sometimes the devil you know just think about it all right guys i can see you want to talk i want to talk too but it was a brief live chat i gotta go take care of some things have a lovely beautiful day let's be peaceful let's think before we do things and let us believe in our country god bless you this is your friend and brother the lozy boy Mubiru Nawa. i'll talk to you next time i am out and dropping the mic